Now I personally have to say it feels really good to be back making YouTube videos again because I'm literally not joking if you don't follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or Twitch where I stream every single day you probably would have not known that for the past two months in April we were fundraising for Hope for Haiti and in May we were fundraising for St. Jude for two months straight. And so my energy and my brain cells could only handle one thing for so long and that was fundraising for various of charities. Now I love making YouTube videos and I love being able to make pre-recorded videos as much as I can but I couldn't be able to upload as much as I would like to. And I know some of you all don't really watch live streams or don't really have other social media so you probably would have not known but I've been trying to you know update you all on the community tab as much as possible on what's been going on and I thank you all for being so understanding that I haven't really been very active on this channel because of other things that have been going on in my life but I'm happy to say that things are starting to wind down again where I have a little bit more of a life where I can upload videos like I would like to so some builds some creative sims some gameplay and stuff like that but overall I'm just happy to be back and seeing your all lovely comments and hopefully if you ever want to catch a live stream I'm on Twitch every single day Monday through Saturday so I hope to see you all there but with all that being said I think for today's video I want to do something a little bit more simple by doing a build in the Sims 4 with my save file project that no one has literally seen in months and I'm not joking no one has seen this except for you all today in this video and so hopefully you all enjoy it because honestly I've been having a fun time building by myself with no one else's thoughts but my own which is very very scary but the builds that I've been making have been quite fun. So when I started the save file project back in November of last year I've been trying to figure out what I wanted to do in The Sims 4 because I think we all have creative slums and get burnout of games or just life in general that we don't know how to get back into our regular routine and I've learned with my Sims 4 like love and hate of the game I have a hard time figuring out how do I do something new that I did in the past and then bring it back if that makes any sense and I've learned make a new save file and put all of your thoughts and ideas into it and so that's what I've been doing for the past couple of months and it's been so refreshing and so like less stressful because I didn't really record it that much I never showed it on stream I have only posted one photo maybe like two photos on Twitter and that's literally it and it's been kind of nice not getting those other thoughts in my head if that makes any sense as much as I love feedback from everyone sometimes you just gotta let you know your inner thoughts take over if that makes sense and I was like you know what let's just build whatever comes to mind and just roll with it if it looks janky and ugly then so be it let's make a storyline out of it so it makes sense why it looks janky and ugly and let's just say that some of the builds in the save file look a little bit janky and ugly but they have a purpose and I've been taking a lot of inspiration from like people's other save files and other builds I've seen on the gallery and my friend Ocean Sims and Urban Sims have made videos about this one custom save file named Winbrook and it looks so good it's a midwestern you know styled save file I think inspired by Detroit or something like that but all I know I live in the Midwest and I love the vibes of the Midwest that when I look on Pinterest of Midwestern houses I'm like oh that looks so good I must have it and I think that's where my brain was going with the save file when I first started that I wanted to be able to make a Midwestern save file that was kind of inspired by Winbrook but using my own ideas of what I could come up with and you'll probably see some janky wacky builds here and there in the save file but trust me they will make sense once I have a storyline in place for that said build but for this build for today we will do a lot more real-time decorating and maybe do some landscaping here and there because I only recorded like me building the shell the roofing and the window placement and wallpaper and that's it and I thought it'd be kind of a good idea to do just like some simple real-time decorating you get to see my thought process we chit chat for a little bit and just have plain old fun because sometimes you don't really get to see everything that I do in a speed build because I cut out so much and me coming back into making YouTube videos again especially with like a Sims video I want to take this direction a lot more easier for myself 
so I don't have to edit as much, but also for your eyes and ears, because speed builds can be a lot, they're way too fast, and you don't get to see everything, especially like in a real-time tour sometimes. But I think for this save file and going forward, things will be a lot more simpler. The videos might be a lot longer, where if I do a build, it might be like 30, 40 minutes long or longer. I don't know. Because I, one, can talk forever, and two, I'm very indecisive. I never know how to build in The Sims 4 or Sims in general. I leave it up to you all to give me your best ideas and suggestions, and I go along with it. And it helps me in the long run. It really, truly does. But I think for this save file, I'm using a lot of tool mod to be able to place a lot of objects off of the lot. You'll see more of it once we kind of get into like the real time decorating because since this video, since November of last year, I have done way too much building. I've built other houses. I've decorated, you know, Willow Creek a little bit better with some of the debug items. Like it is insane on how much I have added thus far. And it's only going to get a lot better because I am learning to utilize my two brain cells to the best of my ability to make a save file one for me at the end of the day, but also from for you at the end of the day. Because this was more of a passion project where I wanted to get back into like playing The Sims where I don't record it or stream it. That way I have something just for me and only me for no one else to see. But now that I'm recording and feel a bit more comfortable sharing this process with you all, I don't feel as overwhelmed anymore. And sometimes I get overwhelmed with building and recording and streaming because it's unpredictable. You never know what to expect. But you know, you have to be uncomfortable with, you have to, well, you have to be comfortable with the uncomfortable sometimes. And sometimes things get a little messy and that's okay. And I think overall, with that being said, this build is all about doing things that I'm uncomfortable with doing in The Sims with building and decorating and storytelling and just rolling with it and just having fun. And I have enjoyed it thus far. And hopefully you all enjoy like this process and everything. I'll make some couple of videos here and there of the save file with building and explaining more about the save file with some storylines that I have uh, that I have not created just yet, but I will share a little bit more videos regarding the process of this personal project of mine. And you will all have access to the save file when it's completely done of the neighborhoods that I want to have done so far, like Willow Creek, New Crest, and Oasis Springs are the three that I want to start finishing and then maybe release it after that. But to be determined when that, you know, process will be done. But you will see videos coming soon. But I think we should go ahead and go into the real-time decorating of this build. And it will be a residential rental, so three properties on one lot. So it'll be very interesting to decorate with you all in this video. So as of right now, this is what the save file is looking like from the neighborhood view of Willow Creek. And I've only done Willow Creek thus far. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do, get the lay of the land of the theme of each and every neighborhood. But mostly on this side in the Foundry Cove area is where I spent the most work of the houses, the general environment around it. But the Dusty Hovel is where the build is currently standing. And when I tell you I've been having an absolute field day decorating the environment, I truly have. Like, I don't know how to stop decorating until I feel like I've done everything that I needed and more some. Like, this is what the house looks like right now. We have three different properties and they're all different sizes. The road for said neighborhood looks exactly like this. I wanted to add in a lot of different things like the hopscotches, also these random cars that are from debug that you cannot use. I also added in like a basketball hoop court thing onto the side of the sidewalk just for some interactability, some bikes, and then I added in some picnic tables and some grills and then also a dumpster on this side. I even added in like a random tent and then like a fire grill trash can thing all back there. And then on this side over here, I added in some planter boxes, a swing set, some more basketball stuff. I even added an easel and some benches and even a selling table. Cause I feel like base game only has so much you can add into it, especially when it was from 2014 
we did not have a lot of stuff. So I felt like if you're going to include everything from every pack, might as well make the neighborhood look cool and fun for every single sim that might come around this neighborhood. But let's change everything to what it's going to be. Each one has a different backyard. This is a skinty backyard, let's be real here. I didn't really decide when I first made the save file, I didn't think of residential rental lots for a long time because I always felt, ooh, I don't know, it was gonna be a little bit tricky. I mean, back then the for rent pack was buggy as ever and I wanted to stay clear from that as much as possible. But as I started to learn to play the game for what it is and like play test some things of their, you know, limitations and how far can I push those limits? And I've been having a lot of fun. Like I have a current household right now that I'm playing with and it's an elder household. And if you know me, I love me some elders. Elders are my ride or die. I feel like there's not a lot of elder gameplay in The Sims 4 just because everything's so centered, focused on like young adults and teenagers and adults that elders are kind of pushed on the back burner that we need a little bit more love for them. So that way they feel a little bit more included into the whole general sides of The Sims, at least The Sims 4. So I think for this general size of the house what I'm thinking of doing is making this like a, a bathroom or a bedroom I have the hardest time dealing with layouts because I never know what looks good or if it's going to make any sense to the the people who are downloading these houses or watching said videos I just kind of go with the flow and hope for the best that's usually also how I build all of my houses I don't really go off of a floor plan because I used to do that a long time ago and I felt floor plans felt so restrictive that I just felt mm, I don't want to do this anymore so I'm like let's just build freehand but this could be the foyer area and I think this could probably be like open floor plan in a way that's what I'm thinking so this could probably be a living room this could be like the kitchen area and then this could also just be part of like the kitchen dining room area I think for the hallway table I want to use the one from the crystal creation stuff pack because I've been learning to like it a little bit more, but also I like the table and it kind of works for the vision that I'm trying to go with. So we'll put the mirror on the side and I think we have a bulletin board that we can put onto the wall. That way it looks really cohesive and nice. But then if I put this here, this bulletin board right there, it makes sense. But the other thought that I had was putting in the, uh, postcard board thing where you can like add all your postcards of your pen pals that you find online like if I take this out and put this right here it looks nice but then I could put that into the kitchen move that also into the kitchen and the other thought that I had was utilizing the everyday clutter kit which I feel like we need a 2.0 for that one because it's a good kit and we don't have enough so I think the more we have of that in the game would be better. Plus it gives me a chance to clutter up a hallway and I am not very good at decorating hallways whatsoever. I get a little bit stressed. Even when I'm like trying to build in real time, I have no idea what I'm saying. Usually it's just straight up gibberish and whatever comes out of my mouth is like, what did he just say? I couldn't tell you. But we'll leave this because I actually had this in my apartment when I lived in. And I always had a little, you know, a little, little thing on the wall with my mail and my keys and stuff. And I would just lay it right there. Plus, I don't want to over clutter this build. That way, when I play in it down the line, my Sims can utilize their own objects, decorate their walls however they want when they're able to do so. I want to be able to put them under here. This is a kind of a great way if you want to make your houses look more lived in, just place boxes or random stuff under said table so that way it looks a little bit nicer something that i have been doing as of lately in all of my builds if you haven't noticed is i've been trying to put a bunch of these photo frames along the side of the wall near the stairs because if you've seen the show uh this is us which is a phenomenal show by the way i'm sad it's I'm sad it's gone. I mean, you can still watch it. I watch it on Disney Plus because it's like part of Hulu and whatever package, whatever. But I've been watching it and I've been having a fun time re-watching it, seeing what I missed because I stopped at like season two or something like that. And I always forget that they do those like flashback moments of going back into their past and going to the future, doing a lot of flip-flop stuff. And so 
I kind of just forgot about it for a while. And since watching it, it kind of got me inspired to do gameplay a little bit more differently for family gameplay and be a lot more, I guess, open-minded with the idea of like the stories that I'm telling and how I want to be able to um, go on to the next generation. Because my problem is, is that I have attachment issues where I want to be able to keep my Sims forever and ever and ever and never have them die. Because when they leave me, I'm like, I'm all alone. I can't, I can't do this no more. I got to give up. So I make a whole new household and then I start anew. And, and that's, that's where I kind of lead, lead to the next save file. And something that I did so many years ago, I think back when, I think, it's, I don't know what pack we had around the time. Oh no. When we had Dine Out, when we got down a, a long time ago, I remember there was a household that I played that I just made out of random. And I don't know how it came up with this last name or how I came up with this, this family, but I was hooked, hooked from the very start. I made review videos about this. I've made some current household videos about this. If you've watched the channel for a very long time, you probably know what I'm talking about. But there was this household that I created just for fun based around the Dine Out game pack. And it was called the Delgado household. And I think I described it as a German Italian family that lived in Willow Creek. And I don't know half of these Sims names whatsoever, but I went with it and I had a field day. But these, this family, the Delgado, they owned this restaurant in Willow Creek and they were very successful at it. Then they decided to go, go ahead and close it down due to just wanting to start a new life and not really have the hustle and bustle of owning a restaurant anymore. So they packed their bags, moved over to Windenburg where they all kind of originated from. And there was this instant with this one sim that I can't remember their name of, but all I know they got arrested and then got deported back to, I don't know, some world because they were here like illegally or whatever. And I remember it was wild when I did it because I was like thinking, is this like actually gonna actually happen in my game? Am I gonna go along with the storyline? And I did. And then some Sims got divorced. Some Sims got remarried. Some Sims had some kids with some other people. And I remember I think it was like gen five, gen five of that household. And somewhere in my brain noodle thought, let's add in some vampires into the mix to spice it up, the spice up the gameplay a little bit more to see what we can possibly do. And it was funny to me because I said, oh my gosh, all these Sims in this household are all humans except this one single child. And I think his name was like Orson or something like that. It started with like an O or an N. And the, the Sim was a child who was a vampire. And I'm thinking all these years, this entire time, no one knew. They felt like, oh, something's off about this child. Something's going going on. Let's figure out what's happening. And so they do this whole research thing. They go to university, find some professor to see if they could talk to somebody. They help them with this problem. And at the time, I'm like thinking, oh, that's not not a, that's a non-issue. That's not going to happen. Nothing's going to be wrong. And so I find out that maybe if I do it correctly, this child could have been related to Vlad uh, Vladimir Strahd way, 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 way back in the day from like Gen 0 0.20 thousand from like the 1800s. And from Gen back then to Gen 5, no one in the household was a vampire except him. Somehow it skipped all these generations, but that one Sim. And I think I still have the save file somewhere, but I also believe that I, well, the thing is I don't delete anything. I keep everything like a hoarder. It's, it's a problem, but I'm not going to solve it. But the thing is though, I was so hooked to that family that since that family, I was like, how do I recreate that spark that I had? Not the Sim sparked. We don't talk about that here, but the, the spark that I had to relive the joy from that family, but in a different way. And so I feel like my cats and dogs family was that, and I love that family so much. And then I had the, the college friends, and I just had so many cool households that I thought were so cool. Um, other people didn't think it was cool, but I enjoyed them. I think at the end of the day, as long as you like your, your Sims family and you love what you're doing, that's all that matters. So enjoy with what you're doing. Don't let other people's opinion depict um, what you should and should not do, you know? Just have fun with it. Roll with the punches, as I always say. 
roll with the punches and this will be put into the bedroom because there's no way it's gonna fit anywhere else but actually i could squeeze it like right here I feel this could be like a household for like a new parent new single parent or something like that navigating parenthood learning about life how to figure out how to balance being a, a doctor and a, a parent but also simultaneously going back to school at the same time to get another degree but in economics become to become a lawyer so it's like balancing all of these careers all of these responsibilities all at once in a new home with a young young child who's like three so the question is will this parent survive everything yes they will because they have a very good support group they have neighbors, they have, you know, other relatives in the town that they could, you know, rely on if they need any help with anything, whether it's like groceries or babysitting or just general a shoulder to cry on. Oh, and I want to use the the one kit from the one that Zarela did. It's called the Modern Lux Kit because I really like these paintings that we got from it. And I've been using it a lot because the swatches look really nice. If I can have my dream kitchen, it would literally be sage green. It's like, if you can make your dream kitchen, what would it be? What color would it be? Give me everything, because I want to know. So the kitchen, dining room, living room, hallway area is all done. I feel like something could be here, but I might leave that space open for like a painting or two. But for the upstairs, we have our bathroom, kid's bedroom, and then parent's bedroom. Maybe for the parent's bedroom, I feel like I can make a single parent and be fine with having the bed against the wall like not this way but this way so we have a little bit more room for like a nightstand and then i could put the dresser drawer right against the bed just like that and then we could also put one of these right here in like more of a white color but then i like the one from discovery university a little bit more so it matches our drawers and maybe i can add in a little desk because i realize there's no desk in this household whatsoever but it also could go into the hallway as well because i know a lot of people do have like hallway desks in their house on the second floor or at least in some part of their home so i think having it in there would be okay now we could do wait when do we get more swatches for this Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, this is base game above deck. When did we get... This changes everything. This changes everything. When did we get new swatches for this? I'm pretty sure from like here to like down here is all new. We probably got this like a couple of months ago or a year ago and I just haven't looked. I'm probably like late to the game, but like this is crazy. Hold on, this is changes like my whole color scheme, my whole idea. <gasps> So we can add in some shelving actually. So we'll move this and we'll put it on the, on the against above the, the bed right here. We'll add the shelving like right here, smack that but kind of like right in the middle. And we can add in our keepsake boxes that we got from growing together and some other growing together items and maybe some marbles. And something that I've mentioned before in the past in a different video, and I think also streams too, is that wouldn't it be so cool if you could measure like the height of your sims more so like sim children because teenagers through elders are all the same height but infants toddlers and children aren't so i think it could be really cool to like measure the height of your child on like on a wall or something to give it some i don't know i don't know what, what i'm really saying but it's just like the idea of it could be really cool but it probably will never happen because I don't think it's possible, but it is possible, but it's not possible at the same time. But never say never. So I think I'm done with the parent's bedroom. We'll go to the kid's bedroom because that will be a little bit more easier to manage since it is technically a toddler or I can make it into an infant, infant or a toddler, because then that way I can experience milestones. So I'll add in a crib. I'll add in a crib here. And then I will also go ahead and add in the changing table as well on the other side of the room, which will be right here. And I personally really haven't experienced playing with infants in a very long time, because when we got infants, I immediately started doing the 100 baby challenge, which is never a good idea. Don't do it. Save yourself the anxiety, the stress, the losing of the hair, just don't do it. It's not safe, it's not healthy. And I, I, I don't know if you all are family game players, but I know I am. And something that I think could have been a really cool feature 
added into at least growing together or parenthood or some type of uh, base game update is back to school shopping. Now, I don't know what it's like for other people around the world, but I know in America, the land of the sad, broke and depressed out here in these streets, um, is that we have back to school shopping, or at least some people do back to school shopping at least every once in a while, or usually around like the summertime, like July, a little bit of August and September, back to school shopping, good deals is that we go to stores, we buy new clothing, we buy new books and backpacks and stuff like that. It will be so cool to have that in The Sims 4, like during the summer months or summer week or weeks, depending on your lifespan and how long you, uh, play your sims games that there should be like a pop-up or an event or something of some type to be able to have like back to school shopping and i know that it'd probably not be accessible for all the packs because i feel like it would ba be based around seasons so it could be a seasons update where we have back to school shopping and then after that when you have other packs it adds extra features like growing together adds like a special little milestone and then um parenthood adds like some type of special interaction that only if you have parenthood I don't know like random stuff that makes it more alive if that makes sense for the kids experience but also the parents experience like imagine like you get a you, you get a moodlet from a parent saying why does this book bag cost like 50 simoleons or why does this like teacher need all these things on this list for my child to have in school like random little moodlets that would freak the parents out or make them happy or angry or sad or like random stuff or even having a way where the parents or just random sims could go and like go to a store or click on their sim self or go on the computer actually it would be better for a computer interaction saying click web or order and if you click the order or the web button it would say order or purchase um the teacher's wish list and then you click it and then it would buy all the stuff off of the teacher's wish list or like a few on the list and then you would get a call from said teacher like a notification saying hi so and so thank you for buying the stuff on my list and uh, stuff like that i don't know random things that would make it um the whole back to school thing um, like life lifelike because you know teachers are really out here doing a lot of hard work because they are troopers they do it every single day they love what they do they love helping the kids grow you know mentally and emotionally sometimes and it, it's nice to see that they really do care about making sure the children are doing the best that they can and not tearing them down because sometimes it can be a, a, a lot emotionally on a teacher and emotionally a lot on a student that sometimes you got to have not sometimes you need to have those people that you can rely on and trust like when I was in grade school and just in school in general I always had teachers that I could always count on and lean on and talk to if I was feeling sad or happy or just wanted to talk about something they were always there and my teachers literally changed my life if it wasn't for them I probably wouldn't even be here um so it, it's nice to have those teachers that are always rooting counting on you rooting you on to do the best of the best and be the best that you can you know i don't know it's it's weird and sentimental at a time like i know if you if if you've had that before when you all were younger or in school or you were kids are in school and have been going like going through that too i don't know but it's the the thought that counts and then for the backyard I haven't really decided because it's a very small backyard and you can't really add in much. But if I want to be very consistent with everything, especially with neighbor number two and three, and their houses are way smaller than this one, like this is the biggest house amongst the three. So if I'm going to be smart about this, I'm going to have to add in all things that I want. So we can add in some planter boxes right here along the edge. I don't think they'll be able to utilize everything so I might have to give it a little bit more room now that I think about it so we'll do it like this mm. yeah there we go so we'll have room right here and then I do need a grill I want to put it here but at the same time I want to add 
Can I add in a tree house in the corner or is it way too big? I could add in a tree house, but it could be a community tree house. Oh, you know what? No, I can add in a tree house from growing together, but the tree house has to be put off of the lot. So, cause that's gigantic. So I'm thinking, what if I add it like right here? Basically, okay, I'm gonna delete that cause I don't want it anymore. Delete this little plant. I don't want it at all because I could put the tree house here or I could put the tree house. Ooh, it's a bit tricky. Where could the community tree house go? Cause I can't move any of these other trees cause they're already like actually attached to the ground. But then having it right there also makes no sense. It's like, I want to have it somewhere, but also like a place where it's not out of pocket. And I feel like there should be some more activities back here, but I don't know what. I could add in an easel into the back. I can also add in some kid stuff, a little kiddie pool. That is a thought. I could add in a kiddie pool. So yeah, let's add in a little kiddie pool into the mix. So that way the child just feels a nest alone. Cause if we're gonna be maybe like a day before they age up into a toddler, you might as well add it in. Plus the adults and teenagers could also go into this if they wanted to, cause their backyard's not that big enough for anything remotely for a pool. If they had a pool, they would literally drown and would not see the light of day. So we don't need that on our hands. Not now, nor ever. It's going to be a little bit tricky, but I think we're going to make it work for the backyard, hopefully. So if I have my planter boxes here, my clothesline right here, and then if I add in my grill, it has to be in a place that makes sense because I could put it smack dab right in the middle, right there, Maybe like right there. Yeah, like right there. There we go. Now it's a little bit more centered. I could put it right there and then I could go back and add in my little tables. Oh, wait. I forgot we had this one. Hmm. I could add in that right there. Because it matches the little end table on the inside, but we don't have anything else on the outside that matches that. So when in doubt, use base game. We'll use that in more of a green color so it makes so it matches the vibe. And we'll move them all into the side right here. It's like when you look at it, something's missing, but you just don't know what it is. And I couldn't tell you what it is because I don't know myself what's missing. I've seen these chairs. We're gonna make them all the same color, or at least the same type of color. There we go. And we'll also have to change this too. That, again, I don't wanna to add too much stuff in the backyard, but enough stuff to give your Sims something to do, at least for my Sims to do at least something. A lot of my landscaping is pretty much the exact same as I've been doing it for years. And I kind of haven't um, stepped out of that comfort zone because it's been working for my builds and I kind of like the cohesiveness of it. So I've stuck with it since then and I have no intention of ever stepping out of that comfort zone. At least not yet though, not yet. Keyword, yet. <laughs> Let's add in this debug stuff. Ooh, ooh, that's huge. Let's rotate all of this right here. I feel like I should add some more trees some shrubbery on its side but i think i might leave it though leave it alone i will add in this big old giant tree that we have from base game that i usually use a lot and it's that one is like cripus tree like this one so i'm gonna put it in the back like right here and take the same one and put it right here here and do you really need a tree? Not really. You don't really deserve a tree. Not yet, at least. We'll put a tree right here. And that looks kind of nice. Perfect. So I'm thinking for these two houses, for like the kitchen and bathrooms, we'll go with like basic furniture because I feel like if we go a little bit higher, it might be a little bit too expensive for the rent. So go basic and go home. But let's take out this counter and I might actually put it over on this side so that way there's a little bit more extra room we'll take out this counter too and then we'll go all the way down to the bottom because i have debug enabled and we'll use the fridge from base game a little bit more easier actually i'm gonna put on this side and then put the stove over on this side right here and i always forget that these cabinets actually have new swatches but i will tell you they are my favorite swatches of all time because they're simple easy and not too over the top it's giving an apartment but also i kind of like that it's giving an apartment vibe because that's what i was trying to go for 
let's move this window down just like right here yeah because there's a window leading outside by the first house that we built earlier so we'll leave that window there because i think it looks pretty cool and then we'll change these counters the same on the other side we'll probably put the sink on this side here maybe this household can be a little bit more different instead of using base game we could use home chef hustle which is another good pack with some good swatches but let's go with the yellow a yellow can go a long way in this household we'll do the same thing with this one here and put that one there we'll have to switch this out with the corner piece so it works very well there we go and then on i think we can probably replace this one maybe with a stove or a fridge but i'm trying to think if i put a stove here if i put a stove right here and then i put a fridge like right here in this section it probably could work very well it's a small small kitchen but i kind of like it that it's that small i might as well use the home chef hustle one so it matches the vibe of the of this home over here we'll put in a yellow Imagine if we had garbage people who would come by our Sims houses and then collect our trash every, every so often, like every week they would come by, pick up the trash and then saying, okay, enjoy your day. This will be part of your household bill. I'm like, okay, thanks, Joe. That's fine. Um, just think about it. It would be very interesting if we had that, uh, capability, but we don't, but we kind of do at the same time. And since these are kind of eco-friendly houses, it does make a lot of sense to bring it in. But yeah, overall, everything is pretty much good. Everything is good to go. I like how everything is like working for me for this build because at first I was a little bit hesitant about real-time decorating because I'm so indecisive but I like the end result of the first home especially the fact that these other two are more so ready to move in but they have their own touch of personality if that makes any sense like this has more of a home chef hustle kitchen this one has more of a base game kitchen because it's a lot smaller than the other two and this one's like a full-fledged home home that someone actually lives in so we have of the infant slash toddler room over here we have the the bathroom we have the parents bedroom over here who's a doctor said to become a lawyer and then downstairs we have the full-fledged kitchen with no appliances which is fine we have their dining room table we have their living room area over here with a small little pet stuff and we also have their foyer area too with some photo albums on the wall to add in later down the line when i add in the family and then on this side of course the base game kitchen and also the upstairs bathroom and then this upstairs bathroom and then the uh, home chef hustle kitchen and bathroom but that's the whole thing you can kind of get a gist of what i'm trying to do for the save file like i'm trying to make everything as realistic as possible but still keeping the vibe that i want at the end of the day like this property over here i've envisioned four houses on one lot or at least three houses one two and three and then on this side is like a mini laundry mat hangout shared area I'm really trying to utilize a lot of the for rent expansion pack that we got because when we had it, it was kind of broken and I didn't use it at all. And since then, I've been like, let me use it a little bit more to see what it's like now that they fix some bugs where it's playable enough and my landlords get their money. So for the most part, everything in this sub neighborhood will be rental lots besides this house and this house right here. But for the majority of it, pretty much consistent. But with that being said, I do hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments below, as always, of what you thought of today's build, especially the fact that it was a little bit longer and a little bit more different in format of half real time and half speed build. Because honestly, I kind of like the balance between the two a little bit more easier, less to edit, and just a lot more conversational. But if you have any ideas for my save file of what I could do and put in the background that you usually don't see, give me your feedback because honestly at the end of the day it's y'all say foul too but it's also mine but we're all in this together a collaborative effort but as always i do hope you all enjoyed it and i will see you all in the next video bye